morning, everyone. Um, I hope you've all had a cuppa of tea or coffee. And we're in for a fabulous talk from Heather Ford. Kathy Rossini is here also. She is the communications officer with the Guild. And she has a big part in iPatch. She has been the editor and had a lot to do with that. She is going to film. So we might be on YouTube. <laughs> Fabulous. Right. Heather, Heather is Heather Ford, has just returned from overseas. She has been a teacher for many years. I have been to her sit and sew classes at Trisha's. I have known her for a long time and she's full of all sorts of tips and tricks. And I'm sure you will learn something this morning. We will endeavour to. She's got lots of show and tell, so we will endeavour to show both sides of the room like we normally do, because we want you all to see. Right, I'll hand over to Heather. Would you give her a warm welcome? Thank you, Jenny. If you want to sit down for a little bit, because I'm going to talk for just a little bit. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me. To be here today. Can you all hear me? I'm not too far away, too close with the microphone. Okay, my talk is what I call speed dating. Sorry? Too close. Better? My talk is, you know, microphones are all different. And my talk today, my chat, is what I call speed dating with rulers. So I've got 12 rulers, some of which you've probably never have heard of before, and I'm going to give you a brief description of how to use the ruler, and then we'll have um, show and tell. So I've got three cases of um, show and tell here for you to enjoy. My love affair with rulers, and special, what I refer to as specialty rulers, yeah. with what I refer to as specialty rulers started probably about 30 years ago and the first one I ever played with was Marty Michelle's Kaleido ruler and I loved what could happen just by using different fabrics and that's really all I've done with all of these, these rulers is I've chosen the fabrics and let the fabrics do the talking so that's just what I enjoy doing. <coughs> All of the quilts that you see are workshop samples, so I've taught workshops got with all of these rulers over the years, and, and I have permission to teach using these tools and occasionally a book or a pattern. Tutors and designers of these rulers and tools are quite happy for other people to teach as long as everybody in the class buys the particular ruler and or the pattern or book if that's appropriate. Um, so I have permission. Um, all of, as they're samples, you'll see a lot of them have got zigzag on the edge because they get handled. I wouldn't normally zigzag the edges of my quilts, but a lot of these have. And the, the first thing, this is my absolute favourite tool. If you were to ask me one of my favourite tools, so easy, clear grip. So I don't know if you've come across it before, um, but I'll just give you a demo. It's a clear plastic film that comes on a piece of card and you, you lay your ruler on, cut it out, then peel the, the plastic off and put it on the back of your ruler and it anti-statics to the back of your ruler. Make sure your ruler's clean and it stays there forever. And what happens is when you put that plastic side down onto a piece of fabric and put some weight on it, your ruler sticks to the fabric and doesn't move. And so I have clear grip on every ruler I own, from my big long one to my little tiny templates that I use with my English paper piecing. 
So every ruler I own has clear grip on the back of it. And I would suggest, particularly if you're having trouble with your rulers slipping, it's a really good thing. You can use the sandpaper dots and all of those sorts of things, but they, you then have to line your fabric up where the sandpaper dots are, don't you? But this covers the whole of the back of the ruler, so it doesn't matter what part of the ruler you use, you've always got the ability to have it on to not slip. The other favourite, do you want to have a look at that a bit closer? I'll pass it around. The other very favourite tool is pins. I don't know if some of you, Kathy did a video of my pin talk where I talked about all the various pins that I use because pins are a bit like screws in your husband's shed. There are different pins for different uses and I have lots of different pins. My go-to pins for general piecing are a clover extra fine pin and I'll pass these around here so you can see. They're a, they're a shorter pin, not a, not a long one, but they have the opaque blue and yellow heads. Very important. They're 0 0.4 millimetres, the shaft of them, so they're very fine and they're very sharp. And yes, they do bend quite easily, so they're not things that I would be pinning through wadding or anything like that. It's when I'm piecing fabric and I want everything to stay absolutely. I've buttered my seams or something like that. I want the fabrics to stay in place. I use these pins with my piecing. If you prefer a long pin, then it's the, uh, again, clover. Uh, long pin, it's point, 0 0.5, so it's not quite as thin as the others, um, and it's the opaque red and green. <clears throat> you can get solid blue and solid yellow, and solid green and solid uh, red, but it's the opaque. So I'll pass that round so you can see. So those are my favourite tools and my favourite pins. As I said, I've got heaps of others. The first rule we're going to look at, as I mentioned, and I'm going to have to do this one here, not two, um, is Marty Michelle's Kaleido ruler. So you can basically see the shape of the ruler. It's, it's sort of like a big triangle. It's got purple markings on it and it's got black markings on it. And you're going to use various markings on the ruler to create all of the, the elements that you need for the blocks. So it's an eight wedge kaleidoscope, not a six, an eight wedge kaleidoscope. So your blocks end up square and the ruler is how you cut the corners to create the square block. So this is, I might need to get you to hold that up because I can't hold this end. So years ago when I first started playing with, no, actually I'll talk for a minute, when I started playing with this ruler, like 30 years ago, fabric was, the repeat of a fabric was 12 to 15 inches down the selvage and you would get four repeats across the width of the fabric. And you can see you need eight repeats of the same piece of fabric. These days, fabrics repeat about every fifth, and it was probably the size of the machines that they printed on. These days, the machine, the fabric is printed about every 50 centimetres along the selvage and only twice across the width. So you can see to make a kaleidoscope now, I have to buy, well I do buy, eight repeats down the selvage, plus an extra for luck, because I like a bit of um, luck in it. Um, and that gives, so you're going to cut strips, instead of in the old days we would have cut strips across the width of the fabric, we cut it down the selvage these days. So this ruler will give you, enable you to cut blocks from six inches to 16 inches. There is a smaller one that does two to eight inch, but I generally use the large one. And you'll find, I, I, when I teach it, I usually do 12 inch blocks because they're good and big and people can handle those. They're not fiddly. So I've cut, I've got, gone down the edge and cut off the selvage from point to point in the pattern so that I've got a straight edge, no selvage. Then using my long ruler, I then cut, as, oh, I'll go back and say, on the ruler, on the ruler, this is a bit tricky, down the edge here, ah, good. down the side of the ruler, 12 inch block, I go across the ruler and it tells me for a 12 inch block I need a six and a half inch strip. So I straighten my edge, use my six and a half inch ruler and cut the straight strip down the length of the fabric on the selvage. So that's what I've got here. So then, when I made these first up, and the, your first inclination, inclination making kaleidoscope is to put that really big, bright floral flower right in the middle of the triangle that you're going to cut. Over the years, I've learned that it's actually very good if you just have things on the edge of the triangle. 
I don't, yeah, I like that one. I cut this one with the, with the, the um, attention grabbing in the middle of the triangle. But you'll see others where I have it. So I don't worry about, I just put my ruler on fairly close to the edge of it. And there's, a, there's an arrow down the centre of the ruler. And so I find a point down the centre of the triangle and, or the ruler, and on the edge to line up. So I cut. I cut. And then I go down the strip of fabric till I find that same piece and cut again. So I'm going to cut down that strip of fabric eight triangles. And you can see here I've got six, one, two, three, four, five, six stitched, and these are my other two. And you can see in between I've got this leftover fabric. And I'll have eight of those, won't I? So laying those out. I can then put my ruler up the other way, turn the ruler around, sorry, and cut another one, and I can go again. So from that single strip, I'm going to get at least three kaleidoscopes, or two, three the size I want, and a smaller one. So there's not a lot of wastage out of that strip of fabric. Okay? So let's have a look at some samples of, yeah, thank you, from this first case. Like I said, are you, can we have somebody else to help, please? Lorraine's going to help you. So like I said, I, I, I used to choose fabrics that were very, very um, bright, lots of colour change and really bright fabrics. But you can see with this one, it's actually a fairly dull fabric. Yes, there's a bit of colour change in it, but not a lot. But what is really great about it is all this movement. See those loopy bits that are giving the kaleidoscopes a really, really pleasing look. I haven't yet met a kaleidoscope I didn't like, I have to say, and I've used some really, really awful fabrics, fabrics that you wouldn't, I wouldn't give you too long for, and they make really great kaleidoscopes. So you can see there's the fabric in the border and how when you get just a bit of, when it's on the side, not in the middle, they're really interesting if you don't necessarily, I mean, there are going to be some that you are going to put that pretty flower right in the middle, but not always. And I make them doing a half and a half and then join them together. So I do twos, fours, and then eights when you put them together. Here's another one. Just chuck them down. I'm not precious. Just chuck them anywhere. And this one's another one. Not very colourful, but fabulous movement. So a bit oriental looking, but you can see there's fabulous movement in that, which gives you some really, really lovely kaleidoscopes. And the other thing that might not pop out initially is notice that all of those blocks are not the same size. I've just added fillers to them to bring them up. And so that's a mixture of sizes of blocks in that one quilt. So don't forget that you can, you know, you think about the fact that you can, you're doing the quilt, you can do whatever you like. Doesn't, they don't all have to be the same size. But you can see what I mean about movement. Doesn't necessarily need to have lots of colour. Movement is really good. This next one is one of those quilts, those fabrics that I wouldn't give you too well for. When you look at it, you can see it's the colourless flower. And I went a bit out there and went stepped out of the square with, by using the green as the background. You can see these are on point, the others are all square. But you can see how fabulous that is for kaleidoscopes. And the movement in that is just, makes my heart sing. This one, again, was, was pretty dull. I mean, it's blue, and I love blue, and but it's pretty dull. But again, those feather-looking things just spin and really make the kaleidoscopes look fantastic. As you can see, and as I said earlier, these have all got a triangle on the uh, on the four corners to make them square. And with the beauty with this particular ruler is all of those outside edges of the blocks are on the straight grain and all on the bias because of the way we're using the raw and cutting. So it's not one that you have to be too uh, particular about as far as stretching. 
Oh, okay, we've got another. And then I started playing with what if I used a jelly roll and created fabric out of the jelly roll. And you can see three strips of the jelly roll, but there's not enough width in a, in a 40 inch strip to get a side head to top and tail. So you can see there, that's a, the only needed thing you needed to think about with that is that your outside ones contrasted well with one another because they're going to be up next to one another. So, so that's a kaleidoscope made with a jelly roll. This is another one of the fabric that I wouldn't normally buy, but it's Aztec fabric, but it's, well, Aztec is fine, but it's a really, I think it's a really great boys quilt. And it, you can see in those, I've cut them so the stripes, stripe fabrics work, stripe fabrics work really well for kaleidoscopes. And you can see I've given, I've shown you, you can have the, the stripes running down the triangle or around. And in the corners I've used a part of them. So you can see um, stripe fabrics can work really well in kaleidoscopes. Marty Michelle is a book. There's a book, Kaleidoscope ABCs, and this particular quilt that Jenny and Lorraine have got is out of this book. But it's again playing with fabric. You know, I said I just play with fabric. So you see, every one of these blocks is a kaleidoscope. There's a kaleidoscope. There's a kaleidoscope. That one's a kaleidoscope. So all of the blocks, this one, they're all kaleidoscope blocks, but it's the placement of the fabric that gives you the design. Again, a, 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 um, <coughs> not a particularly nice fabric, but it comes up really well in the kaleidoscope. Okay, and this is the lucky last one. And there's more at home that I didn't put in. <laughs> I think over my teaching career, I've probably, I kid you not, taught this kaleidoscope workshop 50 times. This, these again are all kaleidoscope blocks, but that's that's my cheats storm at sea. See the circles? Yes. Not a curved seam amongst it. It's, it is a little bit more interesting because the navies are several different navies, which adds a little bit of interest still. And, and the backgrounds, so there's three or four backgrounds in there as well. So that's my cheat storm at sea, but it's actually a kaleidoscope block. So it's pretty amazing, isn't it? Okay, the next one, she says, having not turned the page, not turned the page is the 60 degree triangle ruler. Now probably, I'm sure that you've probably all got a 60 degree triangle ruler. And they come in various sizes. This one happens to be uh, a creative grid one. But you, you will have a 60 degree triangle ruler in your... Um, Stash, exactly. So this particular kaleidoscope, we start off with, again we're doing, remember years ago, God, it was 30, must have been 30 years ago, I did a workshop, and you had to cut strips again, exactly the same, multiple strips exactly the same, and lay them, you know, use pins to lay them one on top of the other so they were absolutely in the same place. Do you all remember doing that? And then you put your, and the strip, uh, the, the size of the strip is, is determined by how big you want your kaleidoscope to be. And so for this one, we, that's okay, we would put our, oh here it is, put the ruler on, cut, the, cut your triangles and then rotate it and cut more triangles and work down. And then each one of these, because there's eight layers, six layers, so this is a hexagon, so it's six wedges. The other one was eight wedge, this is six, this is a six wedge kaleidoscope. Six layers and then you make a kaleidoscope out of it. So that is what we used to do with um, a 60, one of, the, one of the many things we could do with a 60 degree ruler. Now I must have made this quilt, I was thinking when I was packing, I think I made this top probably be close to 20 years ago, you'll recognise that it's a very old K facet. And that's, that's how, what, the little description I just gave you is how I cut this. 
I stepped outside the norm a bit by picking up that aqua, but I love it. And the pink, just the two colours just spoke to me. And so that's made in strips. So you need your design wall for this. So strips with half, he half hexagons is what they are. So a set of set of triangles to create half a, half a hexagon, half, and the others there. So again, there's no Y seams. So it's just creating half a hexagon, sewing so three three triangles together, and then putting it on your design wall and lining them all up and adding the triangles in to fill it in where you need to. This little, this little guy I made using the leftovers from that one. So from my strips I had some fabric left over. So that's the, that's the little one. I've, now I've got some more modern, these are more modern patterns that you'll find in the shops. But this one is a striped fabric. And again, the size of the triangle is going to be determined by the size of the stripe in the fabric. So you can see how big that one is. William, William Morris fabric. And you can see we're just cutting big triangles and making hexagons. So that's again the way you place them to uh, get the design. Here's another one, different stripe fabric. So again, that determines the size of your triangle that you cut, in the last but not least, another striped fabric, this time Christmas. But there's a lot of other things that you could do with a 60 degree triangle ruler. I've just highlighted a couple of them. And you've probably all got one in your stash, as somebody said. Thank you. The next one is um, a Dresden plate ruler. And I actually have three, six, seven different, different Dresden plate rulers here. So this is the first one that I ever used and it is an 18 degree wedge and you will have 20 wedges to make a plate. Then I bought this set which has also got an 18 degree but it's got a 22 and a half degree and that will mean you will have 16 wedges in your plate. Then I bought me and my sister double wide Dresden, which is a 36 degree wedge. So you've got, ten, sorry, 30, yeah, 36 degree wedge. So you get 10 wedges in your plate. And then I've got these little guys, which I don't know if you can see those very well, but they are both 30 degree, so you get 12 wedges in your plate. Now you all know you can do pointy points to your wedges, rounds to your wedges, or cut them straight. My favourite is doing points. I don't know why. I like stars, so maybe that's it. So this little sample is both of these little guys. So the 30 degree, 12 wedges, and this is the little teeny one. So just playing with Dresden plates of one of, I mean it's an old, old block, but it's one of my favourites. Okay, there's a quilt. So we've probably all done a regular Dresden plate where you've had, the, the wedges have all been all the same fabric, mode you know, alternating fabrics or whatever, but I decided to see what would happen if I used a jelly roll. And so I created strips of fabric with one, two, three, four strips of fabric. In, so I created, I divided my jelly roll up into strips or four, four sets of four, sewed them together and then cut using the ruler alternating. So cut, Rotate the ruler, rotate the ruler, rotate the ruler till I've cut right to the end of the strip and then I repeated that with all of my strip sets and this is what I ended up with. So you can see that's William Morris. Uh, oh, we'll do this one first. Oh, no. no, that's fine. Do that one. That's okay. I left several home, more home like that. But um, 
Then I started what would happen if I joined two strips of a jelly roll together and used the ruler down the strip. I, I found the centre of the ruler and put that on the seam. So that's what happens. That's me and my sister. You'll find that that fabric uh, designer's range has come up often because I love me and my sister. So this is two rolls, two strips of jelly roll together and cut, use it down the strip. And you can see that there are quarter plates, half plates, full plates. And in the borders, when you cut the original um, wedges, there's a little wedge that's left over. And so I joined those wedges together and shortened them. And so these little plates in the border are actually the leftovers from the original cut. So, and you, if you look that border, that quilt's asymmetrical. It's only got borders on three sides. Because I was you playing with the ruler and chuck some of the offcuts out, and then thought, okay. <laughs> so here's another one of those, and this time it's French General. <laughs> and just to be a little bit different, it's got a blue background. There are really great, some really great books out there that have got um, all manner of suggestions of things to do with your Dresden plates. So you will find those if you go hunting. I was asked to teach a quilt count in the year that Brian Whitehead was there, so there was a lot of focus on um, indigo. And I found the background for this quilt, and I knew I wanted to use the indigo background. I'm always a more is better than less. I mean, more fabric. Why have two fabrics when you can have 20? <laughs> so I bought 20 fabrics that I quite liked to go with this, and I started making plates. And as you can see, I made ones like you just saw. That's a regular one. Here I've just alternated, alternated two lengths of the plate. Because this one, you can cut wedges in a multiple from one to eight inches, the length of the wedge. So here I've alternated fabrics. Here I've gone from big, eight inches, six, four, no, I don't know, I can't remember. Anyway, down to small, and then small back up to large. Kathy's going to kill me. And then large down to small. And that's a, a little plate on top of a big plate. So... You can see I was just playing, but I made lots and lots of blocks and put it on my background and thought, oh, that didn't look any good. Okay, try again, try again. And I got down to these two fabrics were the only two fabrics out of my 20 that worked on that background. <laughs> wow. So that's my night sky, which is what I took to quilt counter. Here's my day sky with all the leftover plates that I made to get to this point. So again, I've done exactly as I did in the other. One long wedges down to small, big, small, big, small, all sorts of just. And I always put a, I always applicate a centre circle on by machine. I, don't, I do hand work, but I do machine work for this sort of thing. So they've all got a centre square, a centre circle, sorry, uh, machine applicator on. And, in, and a lot of them, it's exactly the same fabric. So sometimes I will let the background fabric, I'll do a circle of the background fabric so the plates are floating in the background. But here, most of those, I've used the same fabric. Uh, I'm a blue girl, can't you tell? And this is one of my favourite quilts. And it's a... Michelle Hill, William Morris fabric. So again, this is working with stripes. So whereas I was doing kaleidoscopes with stripes, here's a dress to plate with a stripe fabric. And I love it because it's blue probably. And you can see I've got little ones in the corners and there's, there's the fabric in the border. Then we come to the double wide Dresden, that big fat one that's 36 degrees. And ten wedges. This has, this has a book, and it's called Double Wide Dresden. So 
so I'll hold it up. Double wide, double wide Dresden. So that's virtually, a, it's actually sideways, but not that it really matters. And it, um, I, in that double wide Dresden book, I did a block from, or, or one block from most of the quilts in there. There were two, two or three that I didn't do. And what, you can see what they do, they're big fat ones, but as well as putting a point on the top, there's a point on the bottom. These are all applicated onto the background, as all of those others are. And you can hear, you can see the, the um, butterflies made with just two wedges. These are, this, this one's again, there's two strips together. Just so butterflies are up the right way. Yeah. <laughs> this, uh, well, this is again big to small. You can see that's a strip set. And you, making a strip set and cutting them out. So there's lots and lots of things you can do with your double wide Dresden or any of your Dresden rules. And then these two are, oh, this one I was playing and that's this guy here that was just um, a charm pack. So that's a table topper or just something small. So that was one charm pack. And the other one is the double wide Dresden as well. That's a pattern, I didn't bring the pattern, no. So there, so there you go. You can see you can have lots of fun with um, dress and plate. The next rule we're going to look at. The next rule is we're going to, rule we're going to look at is called the twister tool. And there's actually three sizes. There's the twister, which is the original one, and as you can see, it's just a square. You see the cross on it, and it's got little feet on it, which tells you which way up to have the ruler. So that's the twister, and you use a 10 inch square, so a layer cake. That's layer cake friendly. There's a midi twister, which uses six inch squares. And there's a little twister, which uses five inch squares, charm pack. So, with this, this, my storyboard is charm pack squares. So what you do is you join all of your charm pack together, so it forms a square, okay? All you need to think about, and you need what I refer to as a cutting border. So that's this guy here. So the cutting, all the instructions of your sizes are with the tool, so I'm not gonna go into that now. So you join all of the squares together, whatever size you're doing, add your cutting border for whatever size that they've said in the pattern to do. So this is what you end up with a big square of squares with a border around. Then you put, if you can, so you're all with me? Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna place it on up the top. So these lines on it then are lined up on the seams. So in the top, top row, you can see it's lined up on the two seams and you cut around it. And then you move over, and now it's got three seams lined up, hasn't it? So, so that's what I've done down here. Then the next row will have three seams. Now you're lined up on four seams in the body of it, and so on. So you, and I started on the bottom. So you cut, and essentially, that one's going to swing down there. Can you see what I mean? So that we're making pinwheels, aren't we? Twisters we're making. So you cut a row, put them on your design wall, cut the next row, put them on your design wall, etc., etc., And then you're going to make rows, aren't you? So it's really, really easy, isn't it? We've not done anything much to with this to create the, the quilt. And you've got the first one? Okay. So when you put them all together, this is what you end up with. So this one was done with 10 inch squares. It's actually all out of my stash because I collected black and white fabric at one time because I was going to make a black and white quilt. 
So 10 inch squares, and you can see you get twisters or pinwheels, just with this little tool, just with these markings on the back, and squares. And then I chose to put that piano keyboard with the red in it, and you can see it's got three red dots, just for the interest sake. So a layer cake will give you a quilt this size. So remember I said you, you had a cutting border? That's this black within these. Then I put other borders on outside. So I, in my patterns, I say, in my instructions, I say you have a cutting border and you have other borders that you might choose to you to add. Okay? So that's the first one. This one is made using the mini tool. So that's six inch squares plus some little twister blocks in the border. And you can see, you would recognise that fabric from a fair while ago, wouldn't you? Because I made this quilt a fair while ago. The only need to, thing you need to think about when you make that original set of squares is that the outside squares don't bleed into your cutting border. Otherwise you lose the definition of the pinwheels. Here's another bed runner, if you like to call it. Um, that's just two fabrics, blue and white. Always love blue and white. So these again are the twister, so the big guy. Here's a Christmas table runner. Again, 10 inch squares. Here's a cot quilt using the little twister. And again, two fabrics, pink and white. This, that's the next one. Okay, so that's the twister ruler. Twister, midi twister, little twister. Oh, I've nearly forgot. In my travels, I found this little tool, twister tool, which made this. <laughs> And I can tell you, when I was making this, I said, Heather, what were you thinking? <laughs> when you look at all the scenes in behind that, I tell you what, never again. That's it. We've <laughs> got <laughs> is the hexamore roller, which looks like this and if you look closely on this i'll try and mark that so i've got whole hexagons therefore i've got half hexagons yep triangles triangles down the bottom at the bottom of it and the whole of that wall if you use it is called a jewel okay so half hex hexagons half hexagons triangles jewel multiple sizes Two and a half, two inch finish, four inch, six, eight inch. Okay? So this particular quilt is called... Oh, I forgot, there's a book. There's multiple books for the, um, the uh, twisted tools. Snack time is the first one I've got to show you. And what we're making, as you can see, are hexagons that are two part. So for this, we're going to use... This part of the ruler here, cut half hexagons. Can we spin that round so this? Half hexagons is the first thing we're going to cut. Am I better off without the? Yes. This half hexagons. Then we're going to cut whole hexagons. Whole hexagons. The white whole hexagon. The white. And then triangles in the white again. Okay, everybody can see that where we're going. So for this particular quilt, we're not using the jewel. We're using half hexagon, hexagon, and triangle. And you all know what a partial seam is. It's where you only sew part way. See how that's when I sew this first. So you, again, this is jelly roll friendly again, so I've used my tool 
twisting it to cut down the width of the, the length of the jelly roll strip. Get as many of these as I can out of the strip. Then I'm going to sew one of those half hexagons to this hexagon, but only partly. Okay, so partly. Then I'm going to put my second one, half hexagon, onto the side. You with me? I continue round the hexagon, and I, then I'll come back and finish that part seam. You with me? Excellent. So then I, then I end up with this, this hexagon, made up of the hexagon and half hexagons, and then I'm going to put two of these white triangles on either side, you can see. So I've made a parallelogram. So again, no Y-seams in construction. Once we've made the parallelograms, we do a row of them. Okay? So that's pretty simple, isn't it? Pretty easy to do. Okay. So the first one is, as I said, snack time. And this is a jelly roll. Can I do without it? Okay. And a jelly roll that actually went from pale to... You need to turn it off. Oh, okay. This is it switched off? Switch down. That should switch off. Okay, start, start again. This is snack time and the, the jelly roll went from pale to dark, the length of the jelly roll. So I cut as many as I needed. And you can see I've got to put that size. If you have a look at this one, this second one is exactly the same quilt, different jelly roll, obviously. And whereas with this one there were some leftovers, and I just picked out of them the, the really lights and the really darks. This one I cut as many as I could out of the jelly roll. And if you look, I some of my hexagons have got the same fabric all the way around. See, this guy's got six different ones. Um, some of them have got two. There's some here that are their six different ones. Two, two different ones. So with, so I've got a bigger quilt here because whereas this had leftovers, this one I cut as many as I could and I made all of them up into blocks. But I, as you can see, I put six of them in what have you. In them. Okay. This is same deal, but it's a, a um, table runner. Table runner replacements. So this border is the the biggest size, the eight inch. So these were four inch half hexagons, and these are eight inch or six inch. Can't remember. Anyway, it's the next size up. But that, this is the same as doing those couple of quilts. Then, this, I keep looking at those. These are doing an 8 inch hexagon and then using the 8 inch to go around the outside with, oh, on the, on the um, uh, placemats. So you can play with this rule, do lots of different things. You don't have to use the little ones, use the big ones. Use the big ones. This one is Science Fair. So again, this is a jelly roll. And you can see I've done, and it's this pattern. And again, that's done in rows of half hexagons. So two strips from a jelly roll, create a half hexagon, create two half hexagons, but sewn in rows. So these are just solid half hexagons. So that one actually runs down, runs down and the, uh, they're all just rows of half hex hexagons. So again, no icing, really easy to do. Some other things with, this one's called Tiny Dancer. This is another pattern. This is Jaybird Quilts, the designers of this ruler. Mm -hmm. Jaybird Quilts. <coughs> and those are just fabrics out of my stash, just bright and cheerful. But you can see you can do all sorts of things. It looks quite different <coughs> in, on the pattern to what 
to my sample because it's the different fabric. <coughs> the next one is Northern Lights, which are just big half hexagons. Again, one of the patterns that comes with, or that you can purchase to utilise this ruler. <laughs> okay. Next, oh, yeah, next, yes, next, ready for the next one. The next one is the sidekick ruler. And it comes in a sidekick. This is another Jaybird quilts tool. A um, sidekick and a super sidekick. So with both these rulers, you're going to use them to cut these little, this, this part of the ruler is a triangle. Can you see with my coloured tape? You've got a triangle, half a triangle. This edge of the ruler, you've got another half a triangle the other way because you're cutting, with some of these you're cutting mirror images. And then the pink, you see that that's a triangle, a diamond. And the little one I've highlighted there. So we're, so we're cutting triangles and diamonds. And so you can see, now I've cut the diamond, can you see, back there girls, and then here, the other way up, I'm cutting the half triangle. And it will depend on what size you, try half triangle or diamond you want as to what the strips of, size of your strips of fabric. The instructions are all in the patterns, and here's the pattern for the first one. And this one's called Rock Candy. Mm. So this one is just, it's just a little mm. tiny pattern. Lovely. And it's all diamonds. And that one goes together in wedges. So you're going to make three wedges and three wedges and then sew them across the middle. So that's pretty much it. The next one, uh, actually, look. Hold this one up. I'll get you to hold that one up, thank you. This next quilt is called Night Sky. That's the pattern that you can see here. And this is the, is the method of construction and cutting for this particular quilt. So as I said, we're going to cut mirror images of the triangles, join them together. Mirror images of the triangles join them together. Diamond, and you can see I've got them on opposite sides of those diamonds. Because if you look closely, this is a combination of light and dark, light and dark. Yeah. Light and dark of the blues. I mean, each each colourway has got a light and dark, light and dark twice. Okay, so then you're going to create these. This one, the, and then create the block in halves. So this one takes a little bit more thinking because it, it's, you've got to keep your wits about you with this one because you're cutting opposites, left and right, and you need the fabric the right way up and, or the wrong way up to cut. Or, you know, two wrong, some of them are cut two wrong sides together and then when you open them you'll get mirror images, won't you, opposites of them. So this one needs a bit of thinking to do this particular quilt. Thank you. And the last one is another one that's pretty specky. And this is called Sweet Tooth. Again, we're looking at J-Boo quilts. Sweet Tooth. And this is Jelly Roll. This is all cut from a Jelly Roll. And it's, again, it's using, this is using a combination of the hexamore ruler that we had a minute ago and the, the Super Sidekick. So this particular thing it needs two um, rulers, but again, very detailed instructions, very detailed construction of the blocks, and two ways, same fabrics, but two different ways of cutting them and putting those fabrics together to create that. And this one uses the jewel in part of the borders as well. But that's a really, I reckon it's a specky. 
And don't you love a black background? Yes. 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 Love, yes. Love, yes. Love, yes. love a black background. <laughs> And you might not be able to see, there's actually some little holes in the ruler where you can put a pencil and draw, so you can actually draw on your fabric. Okay? So with this one, you need, yeah, no, not that one. No, that one, that's the one I can't find the moment. Oh, you've got the quilt, there it is, okay. Right, just hang on to it, Andy, please. First thing you need to do is cut circles. And when you're cutting a circle, so cut circles, can everybody see that? Then you're going to use a pen or something to write in those slits so you've got that. Okay? This is, these are four and seven eighths. I use five inch. Because that's a charm square, isn't it? So I've got squares of my <coughs> feature fabric and I've got wadding behind there. Okay, just, it could just be pellet or just something fine. So I have placed my square of feature fabric and my square of wadding onto my circle, lining up with those lines that we've drawn on the, on the circle. Can you all see back there? Yeah, yeah, okay. And, I, and, and if I'm using pellet or something like that, obviously I iron it on. Then I've quilted diagonally from corner to corner. Then I'm going to join them together and see how these are swinging free and I join them together, making rows. So these are joined together. So these bits join together to form a row and then put another row underneath it and join them together like this. Everybody with me? Yeah. Then I'm going to iron them over. Uh -huh. So there's this, isn't it? Then I've just blanket stitched all around all of these to create what you can see. Yeah. So cheats, really cheats. Density. So the first thing I've got is a table runner and some face masks. And this is a good teaching tool because. You can all see my, my feature fabric shadowing through my white fabric. Poor choice. Poor choice. So just think about that, that whatever your feature fabric is, is going to show through possibly what you choose as your background fabric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I've got table runner, place mats and coasters. Yeah. And you can see, you know, it's just a single one and, and it's six joined together and it's what have you. So this that's dead set easy, isn't it? Much better than doing cathedral windows. <laughs> or you might choose to do it in denim. Yes. So this I've chosen for this, and I would say this is a throw throw rug on the floor. I've chosen not to put wadding in it, but you might choose to put wadding in it to make it softer. And that's just all sorts of denims, as you can see, all different colours. There's some stretch denims in there. And just it's heavy. go for it. So you can, yeah, it is heavy. It is heavy and it would be heavier if it had one in. And here's a bag oh, that I'll baggy the edges. So instead of blanket stitching right on the edge of these, I've started right close and then I've gradually got a bit further away so that I could raggy those edges. And this one's constructed in a row of three, a row of three, a row of three. Same for the back, a row of three for the base, a row of three for the sides. And essentially, you're just going to join them together. The trickiest part of this is, of course, <laughs> 
doing this corner because you're inside the van. But it's, I, I mean, I, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with the handles and I thought the dinner was a bit plain. So I just cut my, that's a charm square. I just cut the charm squares in half and added them on. And after I finished the bag, I added them on because I didn't like the plain bag. You could make the handle longer, shorter, whatever, do different things with your handle. I mean, it's a good, useful size bag. Yeah. Okay. Good. Now we found oh, that this one. So just pop one on that finish. So the last, this next one is a 10 degree wedge ruler. And I, this one is a Philips Fibre Art. And I've got quite a few Philips Fibre Art rulers. I love them. And I know Rachel's doing a lot of stuff with the 10 degree wedge ruler. And, and, and it's a shorter one. This particular pattern lends itself to this big long guy. And, and it's for this pattern, we're creating strip sets, for, and it's from this book. So this is the sort of thing you can do. And for this particular book, you need strip sets. And then it's cutting the strips and joining them and then using the ruler to create your wedge. And if um, the rain looks or somebody wants to hold that up, there is an up and a down. <laughs> And join the well, some, there are some plain ones obviously. And the instructions are in the book to how to square it up because they yeah, all the time. Can they square circle applicator or uh, is what a circle applicator? The, 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 the body is the body can you just hold it out flat? Yes, there's there's a circle added on and the body is 3D. And the grey onto the corner? No, no. This, that's, there's a seam in there. There's a seam, and in the instructions it tells you how to cut that those corner pieces so that you can create that outside piece, the purple, into a circle, and then put the circle of the butterfly into the circle of the corners. Um, but yeah, if there is an applique centre, and then the, the 3D body goes in that last seam. <coughs> but there's all sorts, as you can see, of things that you can do with the 10 degree wedge ruler and just creating different sorts of strip sets and how you cut. Okay, so that's all in that book. Great tool, great tool. And then the next tool is a spiral tool. And this is another Philips Fiber Art. And how midgy is this? How midgy is this little tool, which pumps punches way above its weight, I reckon. So, for this particular one, we're going to look at. Got it around this way. Okay. So again, with, with most of these rulers, we're cutting from strips, so it's really easy. And you can see, there's my tool. The tool, and now I spin it, and there it is again, down my strip, just keep going. Then I need triangles. The top part of this ruler is a triangle. So the top part is a triangle, again, strip. So, two, so we've cut white and purple together, add the triangle on the top. At that point, you actually use this guy and you trim it back. You put this on the top, and because it's a bit off when you join them together, and you just resize it here. So then I'm going to create half hexagons, aren't I? <coughs> Down here, I've got half hexagons. From these triangles, half hexagons. And this is one of the things that you could get. Okay. 
Okay. So just hang on to that one for a minute. This, there are multiple patterns. This is another pattern. So these bits are all cut with that little midi ruler. Create this. Interestingly, these hexagons are all cut and they're all different. The three of them are different. I just stitched them on the back so they didn't get lost. And they are all cut with that midi little ruler. And then here's a quilt. Oh, this one is a quilt counter one in there. And it's a quilt made with those, these half hexagons. So again, half hexagons, rows, no wire seams, easy peasy. So don't you reckon that little tall hunch is one? And there are heaps of heaps more patterns that you can do. Some a couple of my samples are still down at my backs. And um, but yeah, it's all right. Okay, so that's the spot on. The last ruler is called the sweep ruler. And this one is a 22 and a half degree squish. So again, this is a Phillips fiber art ruler. And they, there are different degrees. I've worked with a 22 and a half. So what is a squidge? A square made up, up of wedges. See how that's a square? And there's four wedges. That's a square and there's four wedges. That's a square and there's four wedges. So just the other way. So you can see a squidge is a square made up of wedges. And I'll just put this on. So you can see, uh, again there are little marks in this one in a line, because this wedge is the part ruler, there's the whole ruler, flip it over, whole ruler, part ruler. Now we'll go this way, part ruler, full ruler, full ruler, part ruler. Ditto all of those. So if we just do that with plain fabric, this is what we get. And I call this my bra quilt. <laughs> my bikini quilt. So that's what you get just using fabric. But what if we ticked it up a bit and instead of this being one fabric, it was a couple of fabrics. And this is what you get. And then you're going to use the stripes that I've highlighted with. The stripes that are on the ruler, and they are 30 degrees or 45 degrees. And there's some going this way and some going that way. Yeah, that one can come down there. And if I use two fabrics, and when I cut my wedges, if I place one of these diagonal lines on the ruler, on the seam, and it must be that one, this way. There you go. So I've created a strip set with, with floral and, and glue. And when I cut these, this one, this line was on the seam. So there's my full, okay, with me? And then you just keep going. This website is fantastic. There's a whole load of free patterns on her, um, uh, what's her name? Uh, Phillips Fibre Art website, including lots of patterns that, it, that teachers who teach using her tools are free to use. So that's one of her free patterns. So you can see just by using the different angles on the ruler, you get those different blocks. So then, if we join them together, if we join several strips together, <coughs> here I've got, what have I got? Five, five glues, two, four, five. Three glues, sorry, three glues. Whole ruler, whole ruler, whole ruler, whole ruler. Do you see what I've got there? Table topper. What if we had a striped fabric? <laughs> So that black and white fabric is the 
fabric. So all of those changes, this fabric is magic. I tell you, this fabric is magic. You can't get it anymore, but it's a striped fabric. But you can see what happens if you use a striped fabric. So then I thought, what if I use different stripes? Make a quilt with different stripes. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm so this one, this stripe, and the one over there are the same fabric. That one, the ones through the middle are the same fabric, and this one and that one are the same fabric. But again, I've used black and a striped fabric. Created a strip set, and the, the pattern tells you what size your strip sets need to be. But strip set, strip set, use the angle on the ruler, and you can see this is the block of the, this is a block of the month free pattern for me to teach for you to use on the, the Phillips Fibre website, website. And those I've left the labels on for what month That's they are. But isn't it amazing what the stained stripe fabric? Like I said at the beginning, I'm just playing with fabric, and the fabric is doing the talking. And then if we go again, that fabric, that black and white fabric also came in red and white. And again, that's the black block of the month blocks mm -hmm. from the website. As you all know, you probably all know, next year is SA Quilter's 40th birthday, and our theme is red and white, and there will be a category for red, red and white quilts instead of the challenge. So I hope you're all making red and white quilts to go in <laughs> the exhibition. <laughs> and I think I'm ahead of the game. I just have to get a quilt. <laughs> <laughs> There's also this book from Philip Five Art, and see those those quilts that you can see are nothing like what I did because I've used striped fabrics, whereas these have used solid fabrics in the placement of the fabric. And there's a whole raft of patterns in there and suggestions as to what you can do with the squidge. Just playing with the fabric and let the fabric do the talking. Okay, second to last is the Gem 10. This is another Phillips Fibre Art ruler. And she's got a Gem 10, a Gem 30, a Gem 5. And this is one of her patterns called Bronze Mosaic. So this pattern needed, and, and what does the talking in this quilt, when you see it, is the fabric and it's a mirror image fabric. So if you analyse, if I put a, draw a line down the middle, because there's a seam there, there's a seam there, if I draw a line down there, it's a mirror image. If I draw a line down the centre of that wedge, it's a mirror image. So as soon as I saw that fabric and the mirror image, of it, I knew it would work for this quilt. So I've just chosen some coordinates, and that was a stripe from the range, so I've cut, fussy cut, the tool. I fussy cut the hole of the tool, like that. And then I've cut strips from my strip set that I made. And another one. And of course there were alternates in between there, weren't there? So, this is, well, we'll look at this one first. This is the first one I played with at home. I thought, oh, yes, I've got that, that um, mirror image fabric. I'll just have a play with it. Mm -hmm. And this is what I ended up with. But I, I, once I hung it up, I thought, you silly woman, you. Because that was a pink bullseye right in the middle of it. So what I did was fussy cut smaller ones of these and created that and just applicated on the top. So nothing's ever a disaster, girls. So did you see that? Okay, but this one is the quilt from that fabric you saw in the... Isn't it magic? Isn't that fabric magic? And all I've done is cut the fabric up. Chosen the fabric and cut the fabric up. The ruler and the fabric. What a beautiful. We're on the last one, 
And these were the leftovers. I said that I would have, <coughs> you'd have leftovers. So I got a couple of table toppers, yeah. placemats out of the leftovers from that strip set. Beautiful. Okay, and the lucky last one is the 3D Mariner's Compass. Oh. Now with this you can have a 16 point Mariner's Compass or a 32 compass. And again, mirror images work really well. So it's a two part ruler. It's this. And it's this. Oh, sorry. It's this. And you can see some light markings across it. And there's this guy. So this guy, I need that other one that Lorraine's got for this, please. So here we go. Whoops. A wedge. Thank you. A wedge. And then another part of the ruler. Okay. This one you need the wits about you, and this one you need those. Oh, sorry. And the last one is the whole ruler. Okay. You need your wits about you because whilst they're A, B, C, we're going to work A, C, and back to B. So the first thing is to put two wedges together. Then you're going to take A and fold it in half, wrong size together. And you can see here, you're going to, so two wedges together, fold this one in half, and then sandwich it between two of those wedges. And you can see it's swing free. This is a 3D Mariner's compass. So that creates this. Once you pressed it so that this guy here is sitting flat. Okay, then you're going to do the same thing with two of these and this guy, fold it in half wrong size together and stitch it between two of these and like that and then press it so that it's flat. So you can see now we've got actually four quarter circles, haven't we, once we've done that? So I have four of those and it's four quarter circles. Then we're going to join these guys together just here. Here. here, so you do that twice, and then you're going to put these guys in between. Makes, it'll make sense when you see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so these are all 3D. I've chosen when I quilted it to quilt in underneath there because I'm actually not a 3D person. I don't, I don't like 3D things on quilts, but this is 3D, so I, and it was a workshop sample, so I left them as 3D. But I quilted, I nailed them down in under there before I did these two rows of stitching. And this is another interesting thing's work, don't be disappointed. Again, I'm home, I've got this ruler on playing, and I made that block, and I thought, geez, that's not half bad. I don't mind that. Oh, bother. I don't have any more of that. <laughs> um, blue power blue um, batik. So I just stuck it in the centre and, and bought some more. So if it doesn't quite work, don't throw it out. You might work around it, is all I'm saying. No, it still works. Here it is if you have... Just, just nice fabric. But this is what if we if we put a wedge between every wedge? Remember the first one we sewed two wedges, two green ones together, and there was this one has got one of these between every. So that's a 32 point, and this is a 16 point. Okay, and then this is. In actual fact, with most of these mirror image fabrics on this for this tool, uh, Paula Navelstern. Yes. Like Paula Navelstern is the queen of um, kaleidoscopes and she makes 
fabric to die for if you're looking for beautiful mirror image fabrics. If you know Paula Nadine's style, those are her fabrics. And just turn it around quickly at the back, and you can see the blocks have got a hole in them. Mm. Because they're 3D. So the blocks have actually got a hole in them. Yeah, interesting. Okay? Well, that's it. Oh, no, no, no. no. But I just wanted to show you this quilt. Wow. Wow. This quilt is made using a jelly roll. And it's really just half square triangles, quarter square triangles. Jelly roll, make half square triangles, then make quarter square triangles. You're all with me? So that's you whiz it round so these girls can see. So if somebody wants to take a photo of that, you have a camera. I wrote, I've written. Years and years and years ago, I wrote some notes for this quilt, and I'll leave them with you. And if you girls want to photocopy them and share them, feel free. Is it a jelly roll? <laughs> Is it a jelly roll? No, it's no. That's a layer cake. That's a layer cake. Yeah. Did oh. I say jelly roll? Yes, you did. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's a layer cake. It's a layer cake. Talking to it. It's a layer cake. It's a layer cake, make half square triangles, then make quarter square triangles. And if you think about that, it's a, it's a reasonably inexpensive way of making a quilt top. Once you've outlaid for a layer cake and then some borders, you can make a decent sized quilt that looks spectacular, but not a lot of money. So it's a really good one if you need a quilt in a hurry and you don't want to spend a Sorry. Sorry, so I'll leave you some notes for that you can share. I just want to say a big thank you. A big thank you to Heather um, and to all of you um, for coming today. And we have been so And now we will eat. Now we will eat.